new art to solutions and I want to show you my project organizer basically um, what I did was I do a lot of projects and um, including like different challenges like uh, index card challenge uh, just different things so um, I needed to get organized because in the past I'd been I would have a lot of things I'd have to do and then it would come crunch time and trying to get everything prioritized of the due dates of all my different collabs and things like that I didn't have it situated so this year I decided I was going to make a change so I developed this little book to organize all of my projects so basically all I did was just um, I made these using chipboard scrapbook paper and some acetate and also freezer paper and that was basically it. it's really simple anyone can make it so let me just show you what it holds and then how I made it so I have each one of them are pretty much almost the same they all have a pocket in the front and uh, they all have a major pocket a major pocket in the front that can hold like your big papers and then it has a smaller pocket right here so like for this one um, I can hold my challenges for my blog on here and then the things that I've started using to complete them but I've already um, I've already done some of those so I can check them off as I go along so then I'm just going to put this in here, put this ink pen back in here. So I'm going to move on over. And then you have like a little uh, tuck spot here or a belly band. So you can put some more stuff in here. Um, it can hold like 8.5 by 11 inch stuff going through there if you like. So, but basically that's what I'm doing. Um, I just have each one of my crafts or each one of my projects that I have or it's organized with like the next one for uh, we're baking and crafting meats I'm going to be doing a ticket uh, project for that blog and, and I've already got some of the stuff that I'm going to use with that project so this helps me stay situated so I made six of them six pages with these uh, flaps in them so let me just kind of quickly go through and just show you what they look like here's another one this one's for my index card challenge and this is just a weekly thing so I don't really have to have a whole lot of stuff with it and here's some of the index cards that I had already made from that project and I'll have a link in the description if you want to see some of the projects that I've made throughout here and then I'm going to be doing another project with uh, PM Artist Studio pretty soon in February and I've already started taking out some things I'm going to be using with it and then uh, and then for February blog, most of this was January stuff and on getting ready to start in the February. Uh, some of the things I'm going to be using for my next uh, blog challenge for the February love theme fabric. And then I'm also going to be doing a collaboration Shades of Love. So I've got quite a bit coming up, but it's still spaced out over time. But I just wanted to try to get organized. So, but like I said, each one of these, um, they have a belly band. They have uh, room for each one of your projects. A little tuck spot here. And then, you know, they're all pretty much the same. And you can make them as big or as small as you like. And um, I connected these. All I did was just uh, punch a hole and add some eyelets and I use some uh, elastic binding a really simple closure it, I mean it's nothing sophisticated whatsoever but I like how it opens up still like flat and with it being elastic it's more sturdy and 
each one of the holes are secure because I used the eyelets and I just stitched around the edges and that's what kind of helped secure everything and this freezer paper it well I was gonna say it doesn't tear but I guess that one did tear but um, <laughs> most of the stuff I've used with freezer paper I haven't had any problems with because when I made this uh, my little tool case uh, it was with the freezer paper and so far so good I haven't had any problems so it's basically just chipboard uh, old cardboard from the old box and then I just added on the uh, freezer paper and then did a little rub on transfers and stickers and whatever but I didn't I didn't want to overdo it with this because it's already got enough stuff on it that makes it look really busy so let me go ahead and show you how I made it so I have a whole lot of projects and things that I like to work on but sometimes I lose like the instructions or the deadlines and things like that that I printed out for each challenge or project that I'm working on so I need to get organized and straightened out so I want to show you I'm going to make something similar to how I have my little tool kit right here and basically what it's going to do is just house my projects for the first quarter second quarter and third throughout the year the quarters of the year so what I have I have some 12 by 12 chipboard and this is uh, I don't know what point it is but it's rather thin but it's that's fine because it'll still it's still sturdy and what I want to do is I want to take some 12 by 12 paper and you don't have to use 12 by 12 you could actually use maybe eight and a half or you could just use scraps or collage something back there but I'm just wanting to go ahead and make this so I'm just going to take some papers and um, I've got this paper pad and I'm going to use some like this right here since the center is already just kind of bare I'm probably not going to use this in any other project other than what I'm getting ready to make this for because of the size of it usually everything that I make is on a smaller scale so I'm going to get images like that that I'm not really I'm just using papers that I'm probably really not going to use in a whole lot of my projects is what I'm going to do they're all very pretty but um, yeah I'm just gonna and I'm also going to use some solid colors too because I just I, I have to have solid <laughs> it drives me nuts having just too much busy papers too many busy papers so we'll have let's see how many paper how many am I going to make I think I'm going to do six of them so I want to kind of keep it somewhat organized so these these match each other but the these kind of tone it down so we've got the one two three four five well that's four so I need to do two more oh, this is very pretty I could use this in something else but I don't know. I think I will keep that for something else. Um, I can just do another one of these. And then I need a solid color. And I think I'll just use this one to kind of tone it down. Okay, so we've got that. And we've got our 12 by 12. And basically all I'm going to do is... I'm going to paste this on here and this is 12 by 12 but for some reason the uh, chipboard looks slightly a different size they're supposed to be 12 by 12 but that's I guess the manufacturer didn't make it that way so I'm just going to place it in the center and I'm just going to paste it down and I'm going to be stitching around the edges so what I'm going to do is I guess I could take some inks first and the stress around the edges and I think I'm going to use some I guess I'll use some blue distress oxide we'll see yeah I'm going to use some broken china I guess that'll match yeah that's what I'm going to use and I'm just going to go around the edges of all of my papers with this 
And I'm also going to go around the edge of the chipboard. And you know, now that I think about it, it's it's going to be double sided, so I am going to need something on both sides. So I'm going to distress both sides of the chipboard and then I'm going to find some more papers that I'm going to eventually have to stitch on to here. So let me distress these and I'll be right back. Okay, so I distressed all of them on both sides. And so now I'm just going to take some glue, some art glitter glue, and you can use paste or whatever you're comfortable using. I'm not going to put a whole lot on there because I'm going to eventually stitch it to this card stuff, to this chipboard. So, and like I said, this chipboard, I got it off of eBay, so it wasn't like from a, a major retailer or supplier. I don't, know, I, I don't know who the person was. I've had this for like well over a year. But either the paper isn't 12 by 12, which I think it is, or the chipboard is not 12 by 12. Let me see. Yeah, the chipboard is a little bit more than 12 by 12. It's So it's kind of deformed. But it still works. So... I thought about cutting it to make it even, but I'm not even going to worry about that. So, okay, so I went on ahead and I glued six of them. We've got six total chipboards pieces with various patterns on them. So, um, and these are going to be our pages front to back. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create pockets over top of these. So on the front side, I'm going to have pockets and then on the back side, I'm also going to have pockets. So first I want to go ahead and make the ones that are going to go on this side first. And I've got some acetate. Um, I've gotten these from Michael's sometime last year, like on clearance. And um, this is a 12 by 12 pack of, you get 12 pieces. Uh, let's see, what brand is this? I don't know. Here's the UPC code. And what I'm basically going to do, four of the sheets are going to have it. And I'm also going to be using some freezer paper. Because freezer paper is what I used on this right here on my, my journal with me toolkit set so, or tool holder if you want to call it that. So I'm going to use a combination of acetate as well as freezer paper and the reason why I'm choosing freezer paper is because it's very durable and then I may also use some fabric. Um, a combination of some of them will have freezer paper and some is going to have fabric with the acetate. So to start out, I'm going to cut this acetate in half. So it's going to be a 6 by 12 instead of a 12 by 12. I've got four sheets of these, so I'm going to just go ahead and cut these in half. And I want to do them together, but for some reason, they just will not line up right. So I'm just going to do them one at a time. And when I finish doing that, I'll be right back. Okay, so I just cut a piece of freezer paper. I didn't measure it. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. And the freezer paper is probably like 16 to 18 inches wide. So it's not going to fit in the paper trimmer correctly. So I'm going to have to fold it. in half long ways okay and then I'm 
I'm just going to feed it through my paper trimmer as I'm knocking everything over. <laughs> um, let me just straighten out this edge, one of the edges first, to make this even. Okay, and then I'm going to cut this down. Twelve inches. Or try to make it twelve inches if possible. Okay. And then I'm going to cut it in half, roughly in half. This is at roughly about, when it folded over, it ended up making a piece that's approximately nine inches. So we need four and a half. Okay, so that's enough for one. And then I can stitch these two together and that will make two. And I'm just going to make some, uh, I'm just going to make some, some more pockets of these from the freezer paper and then I'll be right back doing, doing the same process, which is, oops, which is basically just, uh, taking this big roll of freezer paper and it depends on what size freezer paper or package of freezer paper you have that can make a difference so however big you want your pocket to be however wide and tall that's how you can make yours so I'm just gonna take some more out Fold it over long wise, long, long ways. And then cut it down to twelve inches. And then you can cut that one in half. Okay, so I have these pockets ready and three of them I did stitch together. And then the other three were already ready to be pockets. So what I'm gonna do with these, along with the acetate, is I wanted to have, uh, let me see, let me show you. I wanted one of the holders or pages, I want it to fit like this. So you're going to have, it's going to have a clear cover and it's also going to be supported by some of this uh, acetate. So I want to stitch the acetate on at about probably an inch and a half down into the freezer paper. So about an inch and a half. That way it's pretty stable. So I'm just going to stitch it going straight across. And I'll do that to all six of them. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got these all sewn together. And they look like this. 
get stitched on the inside and then when I put them together onto the cardboard it's going to go like so or I might turn it like this since this cardboard or the chipboard wasn't right it wasn't like sized correctly I may just put it down on this end and then I'll have like a margin on both sides of the paper around the papers so this will go in here like that but and this is going to uh, serve as like a pocket for like the main big papers and stuff they're going to fit down into here and um, Actually, what I need to do is I need to go ahead and stitch this onto here first and then stitch it up on the sides. That way it's definitely durable and it isn't going to come apart. But before I do that, I want to add some pockets on here. A pocket, at least one or two pockets on some of these in the front. That way not only do you have room for your big papers but I can also put ephemera pieces and things I'll probably just put like a single big pocket going across so I'll probably make one like 10 inches wide for each one and I think just to keep it simple So we got 10. By three. And this will become the pocket on the front. And I'm just going to stitch going around. And that way it will still hold some stuff down in there. So I'm going to cut all these out and stitch around them and I'll be right back. So these are all stitched on and I have forgotten to take my circle punch and punch like a little small hole in the center. So I identify that this is a pocket. So now those are all ready. But before we put these on, we have to consider the other side. So what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I am going to I am going to go ahead and glue on the papers that I found um, the extra ones for the back side I'm just going to go ahead and put them on to each um, to the backs of these stitch on the belly band and then come back through and then sew on these to this side. So this is three inches here. So I'm just going to fold this over and cut this at three inches. Let me just cut this little piece down. So I'm going to cut this three inches. Hopefully this is folded over evenly. I don't know. So, so that's three inches. And that's three inches. And then I can cut it accordingly as far as with the length. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and get ready to stitch this on. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it on here just a little bit. And then when I go to stitch the other side, it'll just go ahead and get stitched along the way. So that, that's what I think I will do. And like I said, I might add something later on to it. I don't know. So let me just go ahead and cut this down to size. 
I'm just going to fold it over where I need to cut it at. And then just cut it. And then glue it. And I'll be right back. Okay, so here these are. I glued the belly bands on here. So now I'm getting ready to stitch one these. And I'm just going to make sure I don't have any crud on this acetate before I do that. Which is probably going to get some in there anyway. But <laughs> after I add my papers in here that's had glue and everything else on them. Okay, so one by one I'm going to add this on. Um, actually first you know what <laughs> I was supposed to my goal or my plan was to have stitched this on but you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and glue it I'm gonna glue this bottom portion on here and then I'm just gonna stitch around it Yeah, I was my goal before I forgot <laughs> was to stitch that back piece, this back piece one here. But I think it'll be okay because once I've stitched around the sides, it's still going to stay on here. But yeah, it'll be okay. This glue will hold it, and then the stitches will also hold it once I go around the edges, around everything. All right, so that's what I'm going to do, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got all these stitched together. So we have our pocket down here. And it can fit some 8.5 by 11 papers. And then we have a little pocket here where we can put some ephemera or a calendar or something. And then we've got our pocket, or uh, what do you call it, belly band back here. So I went on ahead and st stitched all of them. So what I'm going to do as far as putting these together is instead of having this one in the back facing the same direction as these, I'm going to have it going the opposite direction. That way it, this will be the back and this is the front. And it's going to be a really simple closure and basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to punch two holes. I wonder if I should do three. I'll just go ahead and do three holes and then each one's going to get an eyelet. I'm going to do that on each one of these and I'll get an eyelet and then I'm going to put them together with some of this uh, elastic cording. So let me just go ahead and first I need to cut these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this front one and I'm going to mark it. Uh, let's see, let me go ahead and get it lined up. at 2 and then I'm going to come back from 12 on down to 10 and then I'm going to also mark it at 6 and that's where I'm going to cut it at and then I'm just going to line these other ones up against it And then I'm going to cut let's see how far in I need to go at about one inch is how far I'll go in actually about a half inch is where I'll go. Uh -oh. Somehow my string came up. We'll have to work around that. I don't know what happened right there. Okay, and then we're going to 
come in at the six inch mark and then we're going to come in at two inches So we've got that one. I'm going to line this one up. And I'm just going to punch a hole. I'm just going to punch a hole in the same spot for each one. And then after I punch a hole in each one of these, I'm going to add the eyelet, and then we're going to start assembling. Okay, so I went on ahead and put the eyelets in each one of these, and I started to run out, so the first three I did like a neon green, and then the last three I did like pink. But it doesn't matter because it's, as long as it keeps these together, that's all that matters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do similar to how we do journals and I'm just going to line these up according to the holes um, let me get my all I'm just going to kind of make sure that these are completely lined up Now that I can see the holes through both ends from here and through here, I'm just going to put these together with some clips. So now that we've got these lined up, I've never done this before, like put these in together. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to come in through the back. I want to attempt to go through each and every one of these. know how much string to get so that's why I'm still leaving it on here for now okay so I think I'm going to 
go down here through the front and do the same thing. I'm going to go through each and every one of these. And then I'm going to come back through the middle. And then I'm going to have this piece. I'm going to take some of this back. Okay, so this is still hanging here, and then I'm going to take some of this, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off, and I'm going to also feed this through the middle, let me see if this will fit in here, this might be too thick, but I don't know, I'm going to try it, it is elastic. So now I got this through here. We basically have our signature, our spine <laughs> on the front. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make sure this is on here very tight, or pretty tight. I'm going to tie it. Then I'm just going to cross it up, up under this. I'm going to tie it again. this one up underneath here and I'm going to tie it again and then I'm just going to form a bow tie that bow to make sure it stays and then I'll just cut the string and we have ourselves a little journal or something a journal holder I guess you could say <laughs> paper holder and it opens up quite nicely okay. and I'm satisfied with it and like I said you can um, put something in the front like here 
but what I'm doing is I'm going to put my projects in here. I've been working on several different things. Um, I've already, like my craft challenges uh, for my blog, I can put in this pocket and things affiliated with it or the things that I'm working on with it, I could put in there. And I, if I wanted to, I could just put this in here. You know, or just, yeah, I think I would probably put this here. Or so, I don't know if I did decide to put something there. And then I'm also working on another project um, from another channel. I'll put that in here. And then as I'm working on it, I can put the things, my papers and ephemera and things that I need affiliated with it. This way I don't get it lost. And then my index card challenge that I've already, I've done some of them. I'll put that in here. And then I'm also working on another um, collab. I can put that in here. And then I've got some more things <laughs> that I'm going to be working on that I can just add back here. Or just wherever, you know. I can just put these back in here, you know. But I like how it can fit the entire 8.5 by 11 size papers. So, but yeah, if you like this, uh, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, uh, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos and my blog and my social media sites. And as always, I thank you guys so much for watching.